Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, my name is Ali DeAndrea. I killed an Osceola this morning. Now we're on to the butchering process and then the cooking process, all of which you will see in this video. So I'm going to start by taking the beard and the fan, then I'll be removing both breasts and of course the legs. Ah, and as an added bonus, I'm taking the bones from the wings because I will be doing a future project with those. I'll be building my own turkey call. So lots of good things coming. Let's jump right into it. First things first is removing the beard. It's super easy to do. All you have to do is get a good grip on it and pull it off. Just like that. You wanna go ahead and measure that? 11 and a quarter. Woohoo! Super cool. Okay, next, remove the fan. So now we need our knife. We're gonna keep some of these feathers here in the front and not so worried about the feathers in the back. Once I have a grip on this, so you obviously have the tail feathers, which are the longest that make up the fan. And then you have these layers. So you see you have another layer here that's shorter, but longer than these down here. And you wanna keep still some of these really beautiful iridescent feathers as part of your fan mount. You can always cut more away, but if you cut too much off from the start, then you're kind of screwed. So I definitely wanna make sure that I keep a good amount of those, maybe to here, I think would be good. And then all, it's really simple, you just cut it off. Woo! <laughs> Don't stand downwind. See how I did. Yeah, look at that. So we'll take care of the meat on here later, but that's just how to remove it. And now it's time to take the breast meat. I'll go breast meat first, leg second. Now you always have the option to pluck the bird whole and you can keep the entire bird. It's quite a long process. Uh, you need to be pretty patient with the process as well, but keeping the skin on provides really great flavor. It's gonna add some fat to the dish depending on what you're cooking. We've deep fried turkeys whole before, which is, fabulous it just depends on what you're looking for and realistically what you will actually eat and cook you know what i mean for me today though i want the breast meat and i will not be keeping the skin and i want the legs so let's dig in with the breast meat um, so let's flip this guy over now there is a large protrusion here that is like the bottom of their sternum essentially and there's not many feathers on that spot. And actually, uh, Brian was saying later in the season, the more that they are strutting, the less feathers that will be on this sort of mound, just because they're rubbing it against the ground. So you already have a clear spot to start your cut. And I'm just trying to get under the skin. I'm not trying to poke through the meat itself. But if you do, it's no big deal. You start at the mound, and you go down towards the bottom. And then once you get this open, you can really just rip it with your hands to open that up. And look at that beautiful feet. Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna start on this side. Now I have the breast exposed. You can see all of the beautiful meat right here. This is the crop of the bird. Um, so it helps to expose it so that you can see the edge of the breast meat here, but none of this, like you're not gonna take any of that. Now I also am trying to expose the bottom edge here. So I'm pulling back the leg and you can see this very thin white connective tissue, if you will. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut through that to help me see a little bit better where the breast meat ends so that I can get as much of this as possible. Now from here, I'm gonna take my knife and you can see there's a bone that runs all the way down. 
and I'm going to run my knife along that seam on both sides. And as I do it, I'm gonna tilt my blade towards the bone itself to try and get as much meat as possible off of this bird. So I'll start down here and tilting my blade towards that bone. Just gonna draw a line all the way up. And then you basically just continue that process. You can do this quicker, but the more controlled and precise you are, the more meat you will get. All right, so right here, you'll see there are guts inside there. So we don't wanna poke through to the guts, but we know that we got all of the meat off of that. Does that make sense? So you don't wanna go poking in there, you just wanna keep cutting around the bone. Now up here, we've reached another interesting point. This again is the crop of the bird. So you don't wanna cut through there. We're just cutting down and trying to remove the breast meat from all of the funky. And if you get a little bit on it, it's okay. You can always clean it up later, but it's best to just kind of avoid that. And then at some point, we need to make the cut down here along the bottom seam. And I'm just gonna go ahead and complete that cut. Okay, can I have that bag? You can. Like Huge. Like in a Bass Pro Shops Boom. bag. I know. <laughs> Nothing like a Bass Pro Shops bag. Then repeat on the other side. Now it's time to remove the legs. So, we've already got a head start here from opening up the whole chest cavity. We're just gonna take our knife and continue to skin down each of the legs. It's best to keep your blade pointing up in a way as you run it down both legs. And then you can do the same thing as last time, use your hands and just break the skin away from the meat. Once we have the skin and the feathers removed, it's as simple as cutting the rest of the leg off. So I'm going to break that hip joint, peeling that open, and just following the line. You can see that hip joint bone. Cut through those last couple ligaments. There you go. One leg done. Now we can also cut it down here at this joint, which actually, let's go ahead and do that now. So you're just gonna score with your knife all the way around. And then you may be able to do this with your hands. You basically just break and twist. You might need a knife to continue cutting some of those ligaments. There we go. Just like that. So this will go separately from the meat. Yeah. I'm gonna finish up this other side real quick, then it's onto the wing bones. Meat's gonna go into the cooler, so I'm gonna throw that in there right now, just so we can keep it as cold as possible. Okay. Wonderful. Now, wings. Okay. Both wings have been removed. Wing bone call is in the near future. Now, I'll see you in the kitchen. How do you guys like the red? So, I bought some studio lights to try and be a little more professional, I guess. I can make that light whatever color I want, and I had it set on blue. Nick liked the red, so. Let me know what you guys like better. I haven't seen it on camera yet, so I don't actually know what it looks like. Anyways, welcome to the kitchen. It is time to cook this wild Osceola. So I already have all of the meat in the freezer except for this beautiful breast that has been brining. So let me talk you through this. Tonight, I'm going to smoke this entire turkey breast on my Pit Boss Sportsman 500 grill. It's actually preheated right now already to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So that's the situation with the grill. Let me tell you about this brine. So I mixed up this brine this morning. Here I have a quart of water and four tablespoons of salt. I also added two tablespoons of brown sugar, which is an optional thing to do in your brining, and then all of my gorgeous spices and herbs. A little bit of cayenne pepper, a little bit of paprika. I have black straight up ground pepper, obviously the salt, some red pepper flakes. If you can't tell, I like a little bit of heat, and so does Nick. And then for my, oh, and some onion powder. And then for my herbs, I have sage, rosemary, and thyme. And those are all fresh picked from my little herb garden, if you will. So this has been brining for approximately seven and a half hours. Your brining time also depends on how thick the meat is. So that's what we've got going on here. Now I'm gonna pat this dry and that is going to produce some caramelization and flavor. You wanna get rid of that moisture in order to get that nice caramelized crust and caramelization equals flavor. So now let's get this on the grill. Oh, we still have a little light left. Fabulous. Nice, so we hit our temperature of 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I also, this is a really important piece of equipment to have, a thermometer. Obviously the smokers, the main, the main gig here, but you really need a meat thermometer because we're gonna be monitoring the internal temperature of this turkey breast. So, magnetic cutting board, the best thing ever. I'm just gonna throw this on here, no direct flame, and We'll let it sit for about an hour, and then I'll come back out and check that temperature. I cooked some bacon, but I'm going to reverse sear this turkey breast. So I have the remaining bacon grease in a Pit Boss cast iron on the stove, and I'm gonna go grab the turkey breast out of the grill and give it a nice sear to finish and get the breast all the way up to an internal temp of 165. Time to pull it off. Look at this. <laughs> wow. This is gonna be so juicy and so delicious. I'll show you inside. So there you have it. This was on for uh, let's see, we're just under two hours. Oh, can you smell it? What do you think about that? <laughs> Based on her tail wags, we got an approval from Abby on the smell. <laughs> so again, this did not reach the full temperature. So let's get this seared on that cast iron. Oh yeah. Almost too big for the pan. It looks, oh, I'm dripping, huh? We hit an internal temp of 165, and now I'm gonna set this guy aside to rest. In the meantime, I'm going to prep the rest of what we need for our turkey sandwiches. I don't even think I mentioned that I was making a sandwich out of this turkey breast, but I thought that a turkey sandwich with bacon, avocado, tomato, and for me, some mayo, and lettuce would be divine. And it all starts with my favorite bread, sourdough bread. You want a sandwich too? <laughs> this is the best part. Probably quarter inch slices of tomato. I've got my mayo, I'm gonna get your sriracha. The time has come. I'm going to slice up this turkey. Now I am going to slice it as thin as I can, because I do want this to sort of emulate like a lunch meat. It'll be thicker, more like carved turkey that you would have at Thanksgiving, but hopefully leaning on the thin side. We'll see. That depends on how sharp your knife is. And my knife is pretty sharp, so I should be able to do some good slicing. Step one, mayo. Then I'm going to go double lettuce because 
I like my greens. Next, I'll stack up some turkey. I'm just gonna lay these strips out just like that. Those are some juicy tomatoes. Now I need to get my avocado and I should be able to just squeeze the avocado right on top. Ooh, and last but not least, the bacon. <laughs> I had two slices for myself, but I ate one earlier, so check that out. Aww. Let's eat. That's heavenly. Wow. I need to try just a piece of turkey though. I can tell that it's turkey, but it just tastes like a normal turkey sandwich, you know? Which is probably a sign that we did really good. Here we go. This is the real taste. The real taste test. Wow. It's moist. It has great flavor, but not overpowering by any means. I can taste the smokiness. I can taste a little sweetness from the sugar that we put in the brine. And the whole mix of flavors just gives it a nice kind of barbecue type flavor, probably from the paprika, the garlic, the onion, all of that good stuff. I think we did it. What was he? What was the gobbler eating? Uh, grasshoppers. <laughs> He was eating grasshoppers and probably other little insects in the ground. I think they like insects the most. I'm sure they're also eating some type of plant life, eating some gravel for their gizzards, but definitely the bugs. The bugs are where it's at. It's so good. Look at how beautiful it turned out. Wow, what an experience for real. Yeah, my first Osceola so incredible and this is one of the best ways that i've prepared turkey as well mm. the weird thing that i keep thinking in my head is just that it's so normal because it tastes so good i love the fact that i hunted this bird created a memory with nick and with our friend ryan i butchered this bird and today I prepared this incredible meal, truly incredible. Anybody could eat this and would be so excited about it because it tastes incredible. So that is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. All of the information on Pit Boss will be linked in the description box down below. If you have not subscribed, Make sure to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos, but that is it. Thanks again, and I will see you guys in the next one.